There you go. That's my favorite sound. Hey, this Ben with Studio on the Lake. We know when the lake starts to thaw because we hear those loons. It just takes a little small patch of water and we, we've got the, the loons are here within like 10 minutes. So here's the first of the decoy series and this is a, a ruddy duck. Ruddy ducks are kind of fun to do because they have attitude and uh, this guy, if you follow through, uh, probably two parts. The first part I end up with the head and the, the eyes and the body, but I don't have the tail on there. Here's one that was done uh, in Kosovo back in uh, 2001. You can see that rotten, nasty wood. I have no idea what it was, uh, but it was the only wood that was available. So that's what he was carved with. You can see his tail's taken a little bit of abuse over the years because it is wood. And then here's the second one, also done in Kosovo. Uh, right around 2001, 2000, somewhere in there, when we were over there playing around. I would sit all night uh, on the QRF and, and fly night missions, and uh, when I wasn't doing that, I would carve. So the, the color of the beak, the, the blue and the pink, is, is actually the color of their beak. And these are pretty, this one's pretty simplistic, as is the other one. This is an easy, uh, well, I shouldn't say an easy carve, an easier carve. Uh, and this is going to show you a little different technique for getting those uh, those ruffled looking feathers in there. You'll notice you're not getting a full feather pattern. So, uh, without uh, you know you know I don't typically like to work with patterns. So uh, there's where the base came, and he's going to be slanted a little bit forward. So I got the base, and now I'm going to uh, mark out a generous portion for his head, and. Uh, then I'm going to do some stuff that you'll have to wait and see at the end with the eyes on that and to give this guy a little bit of attitude and show you um, what you can do. I've talked about eyelids uh, before with the quick wood and, and I'll show you how you can change the complete attitude of this guy uh, at the end of this. Uh, and then part two will be the body and the tail. But uh, we get the head pretty much done in this and attached to the body and the rough body shape. So as you can see, I'm, I'm leaving quite a generous amount here. And uh, you, as, you, as you watch through this, uh, I'm marking where the beak is at. I want to take a little bit off below. This guy, I want to put his head, I want it more, even more tucked under and puffed up, if that were a word. Uh, than the other one. So you can see I left quite a generous amount on that and I'm just going to slowly work this head down initially until we get uh, about 20 minutes into this. Uh, this this head won't look like much and, and you'll think that I completely messed it up because as, as usual with my birds the, the bill or the beak I, I leave long and a little bit of excess, excess on there uh, till I get the head the shape that I like it and then I'll, I'll go back and, and make that bill match the rest of it. If you watch some uh, head making of ducks for decoys and there's some great ones on the web as you, as you look around there you'll, you'll notice a, 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 a much more scientific approach to this than, than the way I do it. I, I enjoy the, the constant carving and whittling and working at it as opposed to having a perfect pattern uh, and then using calipers and, and perfect size drum sanders to get get the, uh, the head out of that. Of course if you're doing production work and cranking out, uh, trying to crank out a hundred decoy heads uh, the way some of these uh, um, ones on carving a duck decoy or duck head uh, will certainly uh, make sense. In this case we're just going to work this one down and uh, this is a tutorial so there's a lot of material that's left in here, and uh, I will explain uh, kind of what I'm up to. So I, I, I took a little bit of it down with a knife. Uh, I'm not sure how much of the bottom of that is going to be left. I'm trying to leave a, a lot of the beak in there, and then or the bill in there, and yet get enough material out uh, around the head. So that, that power carver is uh, from JPL Enterprises over in uh, Minnesota. He doesn't make them anymore. And I, I really do. I keep promising uh, those of you that continually watch that I'll put out a video of that. And I might get that uh, uh, the 
filming of it finished later today. I'm still, I tore a hand piece apart and I'm going to show you uh, what, what, what these hand pieces are about. So I'm putting in the reference lines. So I, I got the reference lines in on, on this guy and uh, I'm starting to define his head. If you, if you look at a ruddy duck, they've got two uh, little things on the top of their head that they kind of look like horns. So there's a little feather grouping up, uh, I don't know, where, where there would be ears on the top of the head, further to the back. And there's two little ridges that stick up there and they're, they're, they're horns. And they have a, a really puffy cheek system uh, as compared to other ducks and then kind of a, a flatter wider bill and uh, they're just they're just kind of fun to carve they're they're goofy on the water if you've ever seen them uh, out on the water and they their antics and they they take their tail and fan it up over their back as they uh, mess around so they're kind of a fun duck and they're a smaller duck they're kind of like the bantam rooster of the duck world uh, so I kind of cut where the eye socket would be in there uh, I think at this point I, I know looking at this that I have a lot of excess up on top of the head and I also have not faded the front of the forehead down in into the beak now uh, for reference I, I am using uh, the references I've got the two ducks in the background sitting over there uh, while I'm working through the head and I'm really going to try to give this guy a bunch of attitude and I'll show you how I, uh, there's there's a really neat trick at the end of this this video um, that, that can accomplish that for you so uh, if nothing else fast forward to the end of it uh, if you're not interested in seeing all the carving and you'll see how the glass eye and then what I do with an eyelid on this guy really makes him come alive those are the two horns I was talking about on the back the back of that duck's head. And you can see how much larger this guy is, even though I pulled him off of here. So I go back 20 years. You see one laying in my lap, uh, and then you see this guy here. And this, this is probably a black duck. I can't read the label on it anymore. But uh, they used to sell cast uh, bills. So this is a real duck that uh, some hunter shot, and they cast the bill. Uh, in a resin and it's called a study bill so if you're doing a competition piece you would get all of those little uh, fine details uh, on the bill the top the bottom the whole nine yards if you're doing competition carving or you just want to make them a little more realistic I, I own several of those probably six or eight of the species of ducks that I normally like to carve and I, I'm not sure if I had a ruddy duck uh, in there I probably did uh, but I only have four or five of the cast heads that aren't buried somewhere sitting on the side. That, that, that one I think I had in my hand was a black duck. And a black duck is uh, almost identical to a mallard. So I worked the beak down, or the bill down a little bit. Uh, and at this point I, I knew it was way too long. But I wanted to kind of work the shape in and, and, and start contouring towards the face. And I couldn't help but play around with the end, uh, knowing that I was going to at some point um, saw that off a little bit shorter. Of course, there's always the chance that, that I, I don't I leave that a little bit longer. So had it not been a ruddy duck, it probably would have been a little bit longer, and uh, as long as it is now. And then it would be um, tapered a little bit thinner left and right. So if you look at it from above, it wouldn't be quite as bad. So I'm, I, you notice I'm leaving the bottom alone and I'm just starting to contour the edges and the sides down in where the bill will meet the head. That's the trickiest part uh, of the duck. This, this head has, a, although the body is fairly easy to carve because we're not gonna delineate uh, the ruddies when they're swimming and whatnot, they don't have really well delineated wing coverlets and that sort of thing. So if you were if you were making a mallard uh, or something along those lines, a conventional standard run-of-the-mill duck, black duck, 
that head would be pretty close, but it would need a little deeper eye channel. Now you notice I want to tilt that down quite a bit, and I'm going to set it a little further back than would make sense on that uh, that basswood body, and I'm going to tuck it. Uh, and, and this is about the angle I think I'm going to tuck it. So it's pretty steep, and it ends up being a little further back in there even. I grabbed the DeWalt and cleaned this off so I could see if I was getting the, um, the attitude correct. So I want his head down, kind of looking through an eyelid, and then he's going to have, like I said, his tail feathers fanned up over, over his back there. Just like the um, songbirds, I, I tend to do the head first. Um, I've said it before, the, the head is really the focal point of, of the bird carvings in, in most cases, unless you tuck it under a wing or something. And uh, if you get the head right, then you can make several flaws in the body. And uh, as, as per the norm, since these are teaching uh, and we're not doing competition pieces, we're just learning how to carve something that, that, that somebody might want to set on a shelf or the mantle in their living room. So now I'm starting to work the head down and I'm, I'm being cognizant of those two horns. Otherwise I would have really taken a quarter inch off the top of this head. But I'm trying to get the front of his face correct where the bill comes down in. And looking at this I can see that I, I've got a lot, a lot more to go and you'll, you'll see how drastic. That's how drastic I'm going to cut that down. And then I'm going to leave a lot on the bill because the bill gets pretty wide up in there where the, uh, uh, the head and the forehead come down into the bill. I'm not as concerned about the bottom here because I intend to tuck most of this into the body to get that, uh, if you scrunch your, stick your head forward and scrunch your neck up and stick it down on your chest, you can imagine uh, what I'm looking for in this, in this, in this head. If you haven't had a, a chance to, um, as usual, go over and check out uh, Jordy Johnson at Just Car Fusion. Uh, everybody's a little slow this time of year. I think everybody's thinking of, of spring and, and waiting for that to happen. But uh, check Jordy Johnson out. He's cranking out videos, and he's he's a good uh, good partner with me in this this wood carving stuff. We're doing quite a bit, and then obviously uh, Just Carve Rob. Uh, Rob's doing stuff over there, and then you certainly want to check out uh, Cleve's Backyard Woodworking, and then Mark DeMaker with a D in the middle. And those guys are some of the guys that uh, I follow and, and follow along on my channel. And uh, a lot of times, if you if you go ahead and subscribe, if you haven't subscribed to those guys and myself, if if you're so inclined, you'll find that every once in a while, probably every three four months somebody starts something and it's it's usually Jordy and we end up carving something completely silly that you would never never think of carving and that's the beauty of belonging to a carving uh, community like like we've, we're building up here uh, it's one thing to be a solo carver and have just your your stuff and uh, your thought process on there uh, but it's kind of fun to see someone else do something silly like a pumpkin or a pumpkin man and uh, and then you go ahead and give it a try so I'd highly recommend subscribe if you haven't and uh, and you'll see some fun stuff and you'll see some ridiculous stuff that may or may not be worth your time so you see I've, I've I kind of laid out where the eyes are going to be on this character I've set the head back a little further in the body and you'll notice I really haven't done a whole lot with the body I cut the eye sockets just a little bit deeper and you'll notice I'm still leaving that horn area in the back of his head which makes him look pretty goofy. And the other thing of note is look how deep uh, these eye sockets are. If you're doing a duck for the first time or a decoy, you'll be hard pressed to cut as deep as you need to cut to get into uh, to, to make the eye look correct and you'll agonize over that part I just did right there where the bill meets 
uh, the top of the head. It seems pretty simple, but when you start looking at it and try to draw that contour where the bill comes down in there, it, it'll drive you absolutely crazy. You're starting to see that I needed to go a little bit lower. You're starting to see that that, that bill is uh, way too long and comical on that poor guy. So I picked out a set of eyes. I think these are 11 millimeter. And at the end of it, one of the questions that's going to come up is why I didn't carve that eyelid and, and put that eye up under that. I certainly could do that. It's just a little bit more challenging. It's, it's just easier to do with the uh, quick wood. And that is the quick wood. I use this stuff to set eyes. It does a beautiful job. Sets in about 15 minutes, 15 or 20 minutes. I can cut off the exact amount I need. And you see this one's been going pretty long, probably four or five months. Setting a lot of eyes. And I also use this to, to fill cracks. Um, and then occasionally I will use this as a sculpting clay and put uh, feet and what have you in that guy. I mean, if you probably watch the, if you watch the black cat chickadee, I did a little touch up. Uh, work with this on the feet. It goes over wire really well and it hardens and uh, paints up just fine. You can actually uh, sculpt it with a knife or with uh, your power tools. This is probably my favorite part. Um, w once I get a bird or a decoy or any kind of carving for that matter, a character to the point where I can put the glass eyes in these are Tohican glass eyes. Um, they're not cheap, but they're not ridiculously pricey either. I think these were probably five or six bucks. <coughs> so I filled the eye socket. The eye socket is a little bit larger than the, um, the glass eye, and I can press the glass eye down in there, and then the uh, epoxy squeezes out around the eye. You can leave that if you want. Uh, in this case, I'm going to take most of it off because I know that I'm going to put a pretty heavy eyelid over this and then I'm going to roll a very thin piece and put it underneath the eye. And uh, like I was saying, uh, you'll have to wait till the end to see that. Uh, initially, he'll just have this big old round eye sticking out, but at the end, I'll, I'm going to show you how that, that character really comes alive. So I, I use the tip of a knife to press these in and that knife's been around forever. It's a homemade knife uh, that I used to carve almost exclusively with and, and now I very rarely carve with it because I use that Ramelson. Any bench knife will work for you. Uh, the, you'll find one eventually that fits, fits your hand. It's been a while since I've said it but I, I tend to take the glossy shiny finish off of my tools uh, I sand off or uh, do some rough knife work on the handles. I like the oils that come from your hand and the little bit of roughness this is, that, that comes from removing that finish on the knife handle. It just gives me a better grip on the knife. I have a little bit of a problem when I see some of the uh, uh, guys re reviewing knives and they'll, they'll take a knife handle and it looks a little bulky or a comment will be that the, the edges were sharp because it wasn't rounded over. Uh, although it cuts nice, it uh, doesn't have a feel for your hand. And uh, that drives me a little bit nuts because you're a, you're a carver uh, and the handle is wood. So if you buy a 20 or $30 knife and it doesn't fit your hand and you're griping because it's too bulky or the edge is a little too sharp in your hand, you have the means to do that um, even if, if you only have one knife, grab a pocket knife or a kitchen knife or something and, and some sandpaper and get to, get to work and change that handle. If you don't like it, um, modify it. And if you still don't like it, you, you haven't lost anything. But you'll find that if you, if you take a couple of divots out of it or round something over, uh, make it a little bit thinner, that, that might become your favorite knife. So uh, modify it, adjust it so it fits your hand. Uh, don't critique the fact that it didn't come out of the box custom made for your uh, your mitts So there's my soapbox for the day and uh, You can see that I, I didn't spend a lot of time on the bottom of this because I'm going to scrunch it down in there And that bill is uh, definitely too long 
but the the rough contours of the head are there and you notice I, I wanted to put him a little further back because I really want to scrunch that bill up on the front this guy is going to be kind of bowed up with the the head being tucked under lower in the front and then sticking up so his ass end and the feathers stick up in the air so I'm just taking a little uh, a groove out of this I'll uh, fill this thing with epoxy I, I won't uh, this isn't a round shape uh, like a swan neck or something where I would end up putting a peg or uh, uh, a screw in there to hold that head this is going to be sunk clear down in there and it stands a very little chance of being uh, of getting uh, knocked off So there you see, I've got him epoxied down in there, and I'll put one more uh, little sealer coat of epoxy around there and then start carving that down. So his head's in there, and I don't know why in this video I didn't wipe his eye off, but uh, there you see him from above. The body is not quite shaped, and he needs a, a little bit to come out from the front there on the left and the right uh, in front of the breast. So those two pieces are going to get taken over the bandsaw and cut off, and then I'll get back to work on him. So now it's time to, to start contouring that body so that I can get the attitude on the front of that head. And I'm only working on the front of it right now. It's been relatively warm, relative speaking, uh, above freezing. Up here in the Northwoods, the snow is starting to melt. We've had humongous crashes of ice coming off of the roofs. It looks like the Kumbu ice falls out around the house and out at the studio with uh, two or three foot chunks of ice. <coughs> so I'm, I'm contouring this back. I'm, I'm not completely. I'm not completely concerned about um, getting the transition back into the wings into the body I am concerned about getting the transition in the head and I'm trying to leave as much as I can under here and yet still delineate the shape of that head because I, I want that head to be uh, stuffed down in there in this one I don't completely free up the bottom of the bill uh, at the end there you'll notice I still got some work to do underneath that bill and get it down in there and I'll have to do that uh, very slowly with a really small burr this is a, a cuts all burr uh, medium and it's an eighth inch in that uh, hand piece it is uh, still cold enough to to run the stove although there's a uh, it sounds interesting when you say uh, I run a wood stove out there and I'm eco-friendly and that sort of stuff I, I I'm conserving resources so then I crank that pot bellied stove up to get the temperature just right and then I glance over at the uh, little clock which has a temperature sensor on it sitting on my uh, table there on the right and I notice that it's 98 degrees in there so I'll take that uh, flannel shirt off open up the front door and open up the window right beside me until it gets back down to where I like it 68 67 degrees so I guess it's not as eco-friendly as as it would seem when uh, you modulate the heat in the room by opening up a window and opening the doors up once you get it to where it's supposed to be when the temperature is around uh, 35 or 40 degrees it's just a little too chilly to sit out there uh, but it, it, it goes from 35 to 95 fairly rapidly with the stove I can of course choke that down but uh, that takes a little bit of effort to do that and uh, I would rather sit there and carve for those of you that uh, are watching this for the first time the studio sits out behind the house it looks over the lake the same as the house uh, back on a corner and uh, I've got uh, internet all the modern conveniences with exception of of modern heat 
it is just a single layered um, wall I, I think it was a guest bedroom at one time so there's a jeweler saw it's got a fine blade on there and I'm, I'm cutting a chunk out from underneath the bill up into the body and it's not completely finished but uh, I'm starting to free up that and you can see how tight I made that head and, and stuffed it up in the front and you're starting to get a little bit of the attitude of this guy so I got tired of looking at that long honker out there uh, and I decided to shorten it and uh, took a couple couple of rough measurements off the birds that, that I have there and uh, poof now his bill is is relatively the the distance that it's supposed to be and I'm gonna put a little bit of work into that because uh, the rest the, the bill really sways from the top of the or from the front of the forehead and and comes down and then curls at the end and that kind of gives him a little bit of that uh, that cocky look that I'm, I'm going for on this so on the tip of the bill if you were to look at a study bill or a fo reference photograph they have a nail and it's actually called a nail and it's a little bump that sticks up right on the end of the bill and I, I'm leaving that and, and trying to get kind of a, a little curve in here and I'll finish that curve out when I when I start to uh, do the bottom of the bill I'll carve it initially rough I'll use a knife a lot of cases in this because I, I can take small small cuts and I don't risk the fact of the the grinder grinding too much in, in a case like this uh, slower is definitely better Jordy said it uh, Rob said it uh, and everybody knows it that, that wood carving is a subtractive uh, art form meaning that you take away until you're happy and uh, in a lot of cases if you take too much away you can't get it back so it's not like a, a clay uh, sculpture where you're, you're unhappy and you took too much clay away so you we put another lump on there although you can fix a few small imperfections with uh, with that quick wood if I'm doing a big piece uh, I will even grab some some body bondo uh, say I was doing a, a full-size carousel horse or a large uh, carving and I wanted to fill a, a crack I, I would wait until the wood was relatively stable and then I'd stuff some bondo in there and, and carve that down now in 10 or 20 years that's going to crack around the edge of that um, and if you, you want, didn't want it to show quite as bad you, you would have to do some maintenance at that point So you can see I'm just using feather feather light touches on this and I still have that medium cuts all in there and at some point I, I switch over uh, to a ruby bit which is uh, someone last time asked what the ruby or the sapphire bits are it's just the same as a diamond bit they they take the ruby or the sapphire and they uh, grind up the stone and then they impregnate the end of a um, uh, a bit with it a steel bit and the difference between those the ruby the sapphire and the diamond is I find that the diamonds have a tendency uh, to number one be cheap you can get 20 of them for 20 bucks uh, from Amazon you'd be hard-pressed to find a quality diamond bit because there's so many cheap ones out there it's kind of like these hand pieces there's so many cheap hand pieces that you're not sure if you're getting uh, a good one or a quality one or you're just getting a cheap one that someone has uh, jacked the price up on and, and I'll go into that in the handpiece thing but uh, just because you pay 15 or 20 dollars for a bit doesn't necessarily mean that it is a, a quality it could be a cheap bit that someone bought 20 of for 20 bucks and then sold each of them to you for 15 bucks uh, touting them as, as as really high quality stuff but they tend to burn the the diamond bits if you you run them and I suppose I could run them a little bit slower I, uh, someone uh, else asked in the last group what I run my carver at and uh, 
this black one is rated at 30,000 RPM. I've never put it on a dyno and I couldn't tell you if that's actually true or not. So I don't know, but these bits have a, a speed rating on them and a lot of them uh, are, are not that high. They certainly are not 40, 50,000 or 100,000. Uh, but it, I suppose I could stop the burning with the um, diamond bit if I were to turn the speed down. But I don't. I tend to run these wide, wide open, full throttle pedal to the metal, uh, unless I'm using a cutoff wheel, and the cutoff wheels will fly apart uh, if you're running them at 30 or 40 thousand. The blue hand piece is rated at 40 thousand, and this is the part that will drive most people crazy: is trying to get this bill in there. It makes a big difference where the bill uh, connects to the uh, head of the duck. And you can see he's getting kind of a pinched look there. If, if you're doing your first one, you'll find that, that's, that it's really hard for you to cut those eye sockets in as deep as, as they need to be. And, and now I've switched to uh, that ruby bit. And I'm, uh, it's a smaller flame. They, they make two or three different sizes. And this is a smaller one. And I'm, I'm actually starting to contour where the feathers are going to go. And that's why you saw... Uh, me doing what I did there. Uh, you can see now that there are, I haven't done any burning on this just yet and uh, it kind of has feather lines. And The reason I put those in there is what I'm doing here. Uh, all of a sudden this guy, I'm putting the upper eyelid on and I will put a, a lower eyelid under around that eye but this is the quick wood and uh, I'm gonna put put the eyelid on and already you can see that's kind of what I was going for there. The squinty looking out under your eye kind of look. And it just completely changes the character of this duck. And since he is the Bantam rooster, a cocky little duck, that's kind of really what I wanted to show. And I didn't want that, that uh, big round eyelid sticking out there. I've talked uh, in several videos, if you if you subs are a subscriber or a, a watcher, uh, about what you can do with eyelids on ducks, and I don't think I've ever ever shown one. You can do this on your other carvings too. But you'll notice I'm, I I got the kind of the look I was looking for when I pressed that stuff on there. Now the goal is to take as much of this off as I can. Uh, and it really is a very thin coat and then I'm going to start working that down with that knife and I'm putting those those same feather lines in and I'm dragging the knife into uh, one of the feather lines on the wood for kind of a seamless transition you got about eight or ten minutes to do this before this stuff starts to get um, too hard to work and then when I get near the when I get those feathers all put in there, I'm going to, you'll see me kind of tapping across the top of that. And I'm, I'm rolling, doing a little lip over the top. And in a minute here, I'm going to zoom this in so you can see. I don't have the bottom eyelid in there. And I'm, I'll, you'll be able to pick that out just by uh, the finished product. But uh, this is coming up to the end of it. If you hung around this long or if you skip to this part here. This is kind of where I'm going to leave this guy, and then the next one's going to be uh, working the body and the tail in there, and uh, there's some unique uh, ways of doing those feathers. There'll be a lot of stoning in this bird, but uh, right now, this is probably uh, uh, my favorite part. You know, I, I like to see the eyes go in, and I just it just amazes me the how the attitude of this guy came out just simply by by covering half of his eye with an eyelid and you, you can see I, I didn't really leave a whole lot of uh, that stuff in there and uh, you're fortunate because I, I edited about five minutes of, of me farting around with this one this eye
Now this stuff uh, will come back with the stone and the burner uh, in the second video and you'll see I'll transition that in and then once it's painted in there you, you won't be able to, to see anything about it. So there's the amazing part of carving. You you watch the initial part of that head, and uh, you turned around and said to someone else, "Hey, check this out! Look how screwed up this guy's uh, doing with his head. He has no no concept or clue of what he's doing. He's completely messing the head of this duck up." And uh, now you see that that was not the case. You can see that this guy there, there's the difference with without the eyelid. And with the eyelid, uh, I think that's just amazing transition, and that's why I carve. So this is going to be the end of part one. You'll see part two, uh, uh, where we finish this guy up. As always, check out the people down below. Um, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, share this with, with people that you know. And uh, here's the end of part one, a ruddy duck uh, with an attitude. Hey, thanks a lot. This has been Ben with Stude on the Lake.